Hello there! I wish I had a pipe I could smoke. This is actually pretty comfortable. Uh, so yeah, no pipe, so um, I guess I'll just go with coffee. I opted for tea because that makes me look British, therefore fancy and smart. Pinky's up, by the way. Alright, let's get going with this. This is such a surface level statement because it gets dumber the more you think about it. Because if he was on another team and he did Everything he did, and the only difference was he's on another team, he would still be in the Hall of Fame. Because literally nothing changes besides his uniform. But you're probably arguing, well, if he's on a different team, he's not going to win the World Series. So, one, how do you know he's not going to win another World Series on another team that could also win the World Series? Or B, how do you know that he's not going to still put up a Hall of Fame career even if he doesn't win the World Series? And then this gets really ridiculous because they start saying, well, if he didn't make this play, and he didn't make this play, and he didn't make the flip, and he didn't hit the hit, and then you just start disassembling everything that makes a person a person, and you wind up with, well, if Derek Jeter wasn't good, then Derek Jeter wouldn't be good. Rule of thumb, if you're trying to discredit someone by creating a what-if scenario, and your what-if scenario requires more than, like, two changes to history, it's probably your hint that you're making a dumb point. But I'll even give that to you, because you could take away all the clutch hits, you could make all the clutch plays, and all five World Series, you could take it all away, because he will still be in the Hall of Fame, because number six on the all-time hit list will get you in the Hall of Fame, no matter what team you play for. Yankee Stadium is a wonderful ballpark. Stop pretending like it's not because you missed the 90s more than the cast of all that from Nickelodeon. I have fantastic memories of the new stadium and the old stadium with family and friends and so many different memories of so many times I've been there and have had a wonderful time. Atmosphere doesn't come from a building. Atmosphere comes from the people who show up to the building and their attitudes that they bring with them. So if you are consistently having a not good time at Yankee Stadium, maybe Maybe it's not the building that's the problem, maybe you're the problem, and the people you go there with. Because clearly there's something wrong if you cannot enjoy watching your favorite baseball team play. The most winningest season in baseball history did not result in a World Series. And if opening day 2018 and 19, if I told you what the records were going to be on October 1st, you would be jumping for joy at what a fantastic season that was. You can have a great season and a disappointing ending. These things are not mutually exclusive. But if you are choosing to let the events of one week in October ruin your enjoyment of six months, then it's no wonder you keep showing up to the ballpark miserable and just sucking the life out of the people who can enjoy just watching the Yankees. Oh, but that's the building's fault, isn't it? In 2019, 10 of the 15 most visited ballparks were National League ballparks, and that includes the one and two spot. So yes, we are literally spending more money to watch pitchers hit than to watch a DH. Like, literally. The DH was created to add offense to the league. The Yankees and Twins in two consecutive seasons broke and reset the home run record for a team in one single season. And what do you know, we still have a fan interest and attendance problem. If the DH was so good at bringing fans to the ballpark, AL teams would in droves be outselling National League ballparks, and they're not. He tells us who reported first for three reasons. First, it credits the person who did all the work and did all the research, and this is journalistic integrity. Ever heard of citing your sources? Second, it tells us readers who got accurate information in a timely manner. So that tells us you can also follow this source if you want to further explore this information or get other information. It's letting us know who to, else to go to. And third, God forbid the information winds up being wrong, it covers his rear end. And if you're really, really interested, you can now use that trail of information to follow all the way back and figure out where the information went wrong. All of this is covered in the curriculum of a public school social studies class. And if you have no interest in that, then that's fine. It's literally not doing any harm to you or to anyone. It is the most neutral and emotionally unprovocative thing he anyone could ever say. 
But the threat under his tweets when he credits people, people absolutely lose their minds and like go absolutely bananas. Stop acting like this is a personal offense to you and your grandmother. Jeez, my God, you could keep scrolling. And look up those notes from high school. Bet you might still have them. Four billion dollars is more than the net worth of 29 major league teams. Four billion is more than the net worth of 27 individual owners in baseball. Four billion is about 40% of total MLB revenue in one year. That is one hell of a chunk of change. By the way, the notes from your economics class are likely in the same folder as the cite your sources notes.